All the stars have come in close Just to see you, I suppose And they're a-gleaming You must be dreaming And the sun has said goodbye With a twinkle in his eye He's left the ocean With sweet emotion We go dancing in the rain Riding on a midnight train Away so slowly And the moon is looking down On the sleepy side of town And he's so lonely Hello and welcome to episode 37 of Little Big Knits. My name is Selma. I'm your host of this uh, mostly knitting podcast and I'm coming to you from here in Ottawa, Canada where I live with my family and our cat Yoda. And I always look over there because she's sitting on the sofa right now. She's sleeping over there. So uh, hello and welcome. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Selma Knits. And we also have a group on Ravelry called Little Big Knits where you can find the show notes or although I find I'm getting lamer and lamer with the show notes if you can say it like that. Uh, but there are our two knit alongs are there and the chatter and the finished object threads are there. Um, there is a welcome thread and there's a couple of other little things going on over there. So feel free to come and join us over there if you're so inclined. Yeah. And so we have a couple of knit alongs going on right now. One called the Garment Galore Cal, hashtag Garment Galore Cal 2020. And uh, that is going strong. People are knitting sweaters and of all kinds. Um, well, and not only sweaters, it is garments after all. So there are, I mean, it's mostly sweaters, I'd say, but you find skirts and cardigans and vests and um, actually there were some pants recently, some leggings uh, inspired by Stephen West, I think. And anyway, it's really fun. If you want some garment inspiration, go and have a look. Our other knit along is called the It's About Time knit along and that knit along and I always say knit along, but I always include crochet, just so you know, in case you're a crocheter. Um, that knit along is about using stash or patterns that have been in your life for a year or more and that have been just waiting for you to notice them and make something out of them. So that's also going really strong. And if you happen to be making a garment out of yarn or a pattern that has been in your life for more than a year, you can enter those into both knit alongs. So there you go. Um, in the FO threads, generally there's no chatter, it's just pictures. So if you happen to make a comment in the FO thread, I'm likely to delete it. So just, just so you know, because that hap has happened a couple of times. And you can use an entry per garment. Occasionally I see people put two or three garments in one entry. And if you want to do that, that's okay. But if you put them in separate entries, that's three extra entries towards one of the prizes at the end of the year. I've been gathering some sweater quantities and other goodies and uh, some single skeins for the prizes at the end. Which actually, uh, I just want to put it out there. If you are a maker, whether you make bags or stitch markers or dyer or whatever, and you would like to donate a prize for one of these knit alongs, just get in touch with me. I'm, I'm happy to accept uh, accept prizes. We've had that in the past and it's been great uh, to be able to highlight some of the makers in our community. So just putting that out there. So thank you for joining me today um, on this May day. It is really hot and warm here in Canada right now, at least in Ottawa. We've had a very dry warm weather. It feels like July. And that's kind of what happens around here. It's winter and then it's summer. Uh, spring lasts very, very briefly. Um, it depends. Last year we had a really long and rather cool spring. Right now it's becoming hot and sunny very quickly. So, yeah. 
So thank you for joining me today. If you are a new viewer or a new subscriber, welcome. I hope uh, I hope you'll continue to enjoy being here. And for those of you who have been around for a while, hello again. Um, so you saw at the beginning there were some lovely spring scenes because it started happening and I've just been like filming and photographing constantly when I go out on my walks. Uh, there is just so beautiful right now. Everything's in bloom. Um, some things are coming and going and you know like they bloom quickly and then they're gone and then something else just explodes with color and it's just it's just been really really gorgeous. Going out at this time of the year has been beautiful. The mosquitoes are starting to come out so up to now it was just perfect. We had nice weather and no bugs <laughs> but I think that's going to change. So today um, I will be uh, sharing, of course, my knitting with you. We've got some uh, finished objects and works in progress and there are some lovely things that have come into my life that I'll share, but I will also be announcing the giveaway for the skein of yarn from Lichen and Lace that I showed you guys last time. Sorry, it was in a, it's in a, in a baggie there. So it's this skein of wildflowers by Lichen and Lace, and I'll be drawing for that a little bit later in the podcast. And actually, before I forget, a couple of people asked me about the uh, blue that I bought that I showed you guys last time. That is going to be entered as a prize for the uh, garment galore cal. Um, <clears throat> This is the uh, Fiber Company Meadow Yarn, and I had bought this, and a couple of people asked me what the colorway was, and it's called Bellflower. So if you happen to be watching, there's your answer. I've got two skeins of these, and um, they will be going, uh, becoming a prize for the Garment Gilbert Cow. Uh, so, also, I just really wanted to thank everybody um, for the wonderful comments from the last podcast for the prize and I'll probably say this again later but the prompt for the prize for the like and lace yarn was to tell a little bit about the silver linings that you have encountered during uh, this time of COVID and there were so many wonderful 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 uh, comments in there and I also want to say a lot of you are people who are in the healthcare. Uh, sector of, of work or in education and those of you who are in the front lines I just want to thank you and send you a special hello and hug. I have to say there was the heart um, you know you could press on the heart or the thumbs up and I wanted an extra special button uh, for those of you who are uh, putting yourselves out there and working uh, uh, depending on, I mean, I'm, I'm mentioning healthcare, but it could be something else as well. Um, but there are quite a few of you that were making comments there, and I just wanted to send you an extra special hello. So, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of the themes that showed up and so forth in uh, when I come to the prize later. So, in terms of knitting, oh, and I'm looking down at my notebook because I found my notebook. Last time I told you I'd, I'd lost my notebook, and uh, lo and behold, uh, it was found. I seem to be misplacing things a lot these days and I, I have a feeling it, it has a little bit to do with the, the weird state that uh, I don't know about you but I have found myself in at times. But anyway, I did find my notebook and so I've got my show notes here which I'll show you. It's just a messy, you know, two pages of things that I want to say and sometimes I come to the end and I realize, oops, I forgot to say that but it does help me to at least start thinking about how, uh, what I want to mention in this podcast. So anyway, um, this last month or so since the last time I podcasted, um, it's been a strange knitting time for me because I think I did uh, end up wanting to knit smaller things a little bit more. So I've got a couple of finished objects that I'll be showing you that had not been started last time and I just, I, my sweater mojo went to uh, hell in a hand basket, as we might say, very quickly. And I just, I was feeling really out of sorts a little bit uh, for a while. And so I found myself knitting on smaller things. But um, I have been noticing that people are really doing a lot of comfort knitting and simple knitting or really complex knitting because you've got the time and the space to, to work on that. And for me, 
I would say that over the last month, um, I really needed to do just small things. So I've, I've knit a few smaller items. But let's start today with what I'm wearing. I am wearing my um, anchor sweater that I made mm, sometime last summer. Uh, this is a design by Petite Knits uh, and um, I made it last year with two strands of yarn. The first one being a, a butterfly cotton that my friend Sue had brought from Greece and it was a finger wing rate fingering weight yarn finger wing weight weight yarn anyway and then the second one uh, was some leftover host garn in their coast uh, line which is a cotton wool blend um, in the harbor colorway I believe so I had these two blue yarns that I put together to make this sweater and I really really like it uh, I wore it a lot last summer it was a nice sweater to wear at work uh, with pants or a skirt and I'll just stand up quickly to show you It just it has a split hem. The one thing I find about it is that the, the yarn has a little bit of memory So, you know, like now I've been sitting down and so it's flaring out um, So and I find like it has memory here like this ends up sticking sticking folded a bit when I've bent my arm um, and I'm not sure, I have a feeling that rather than it being each of the yarns, it's probably a combination of the yarns, or it's probably more the butterfly cotton, which is kind of a chainette cotton. I think it might have uh, more of a memory. <clears throat> but I really love the fit of this, and, and it's just a really easy wear, I have to say. So I could see another one in my future. I've been thinking about making a winter one, and um, that could end up happening. We'll see. All right, I think I need to take a little sip of my tea and I am drinking my tea today at a mug that's usually at the office. When I changed jobs in uh, January, I had brought everything home from the previous workplace and then started taking things to the other job, but I didn't take this one in um, because I had other another mug that somebody had given to me that I was keeping at the office. Um, this is a mug that my friend Kami in Sweden brought for me uh, 13 years ago, actually, this summer. Um, and I've had it since then, and I've just always loved it. It's got these, um, clearly some sort of print um, of flowers and ladybugs, and at the very bottom inside there's a ladybug, and it's just been a beautiful, beautiful mug that I've had for a long time. And uh, at my previous workplace, a couple of times, people have come and said, did you forget your mug in the, in the boardroom? Because <laughs> I would just walk around with it. I don't love those travel mugs that you can walk around with. I really rather drink out of ceramic. <clears throat> so I would carry this around from one boardroom to the next. And occasionally I'd forget it there and people knew that this was my mug, so they'd bring it to me, which was great. And in it today, I am drinking some green tea. that I got in a package that I'll be telling you a little bit more about later. I got a package from Johanna in Sweet in Finland, and I think I almost said Sweden because of the, the name of this. And she sent a package of this tea, which is called uh, From Dawn to Dusk, and it's a variety of teas that you can drink throughout the day. And so I'm drinking the Rise and Shine tea, which is a green tea. And uh, this is from Norbisk. So she sent me this amazing package. Thank you, Johanna. And I'll show you some of the uh, more knitting related things in it and the <clears throat> pretext for the swap that we decided to do. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm drinking today. And every single time I start podcasting, my, ho my voice starts getting hoarse, so excuse me. Finished objects. The last time I podcasted, I had almost finished the Talia sweater that I was knitting for my friend. Um, and I finished it. The Talia is a pattern by Jennifer Steingass. And what I'll do is insert a picture here of my friend wearing the sweater, as well as some details of the sweater. I knit this out of Peace Fleece um, in the, geez, what was the call? I think it was called Grassroots uh, colorway. I'd have to look that up again. Um, that was the main color. And then in the color work details was some lopi as well as uh, another leftover piece fleece that I had. 
it turned out wonderfully it fits her really well so hopefully she'll be able to uh, wear it sometime in the fall because it's rather warm here now but um, yeah it really turned out well I knitted on five millimeter needles the piece fleece is an absolutely stunning yarn and I have to say I've been perusing their website since then thinking that I think I need some more peace fleece in my life now is not the time um, I have to say that my purchasing of yarns is having to become a little bit selective because the Canadian dollar with uh, with I think um, probably the pandemic and as well as some other events our dollar is not doing at all well right now so I'm having to be a little bit careful about uh, where I do my purchasing but um, peace fleece comes from the States and uh, so I will be at some point in the future buying more of that because I really loved working with it. It is a stunning yarn, very heathered, lots of different colors going through it. It's just very rich yarn. I would say it's an Aran weight, like it was great with five millimeter needles. You could also use five and a half, six millimeter needles. It, uh, or four and a half. For me, that gave a bit of a dense fabric. I'm glad that I switched to five millimeters because I did start with four and a half. So anyway, I would say that sweater was a success. The Talia is a beautiful pattern. I completely modified it and made it uh, top down when it's supposed to be a bottom up. It was a little bit of a complicated sweater to do that with. Um, and I'm not sure that I would uh, try doing that again with a, a sweater that's got a lot of different things going on besides the color work. If it's just the color work, it's not a big deal because you really just kind of read the chart upside down um, so it's not that complicated but uh, there was a lot of other little elements in the design and so that made it a bit more complicated it all worked out in the end and it fits well so uh, I think we're I think it was all right but it was a little bit uh, it was a little bit challenging I have to say at times but yeah so the other things that I cast on during that time uh, were a couple of pairs of socks. I just, my sock mojo just went skyrocketed. Uh, and I think one of the reasons was that, oh, I told you last time that I was ordering some, I had ordered some Let Lopi to uh, double strand with some other yarn for my rug sweater. Well, the rug sweater got put aside. I have not touched that in this time. I don't know why. It just suddenly I was like, I can't work on this right now. Um, but when I ordered that lopi, I decided to order some other yarn. And I ordered a skein of this uh, Regia Premium Merino Yak, which is a uh, 58 wool, 28 uh, polyamide and 14% yak yarn. I've been eyeing this for some time and I decided to get it and I'm really glad I did. As you know, uh, if you've been around for a while, I've been talking about wanting to make socks that have different fibers in them. And so I was like, oh, this has got yak. I'm curious to see what that will be like and how that will wear. It's certainly got a, 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 a rather large quantity of nylon or a polyamide in it because it's got 28%. Um, so that'll definitely give strength. Because I know that generally when they use yak, they use the down uh, in most of the fibers. Um, I would assume that the outer coat is a little bit too rough for yarn, so they tend to use the down. But I'm suspecting the down is not as strong. And uh, so they've added a lot of, of um, nylon in this. And... Um, I do love the feeling of yak. I've knit with it before and it's got a really neat feeling. I really liked it. I made some wonderful fingerless gloves by it with yarn from the Bijou Basin. So here we are. We've got a pair of socks. Um, I wanted, I had also talked to you about at some point about wanting more neutral colored socks. So I decided to go for this dark gray and I made the Nemesis Socks by Ambrose Smith. Um, which is a very lovely lace design. I mean, I'm kind of blowing out. I hope you can see that. It's just a very simple rib and alternating lace design. And um, I made it from the toe up. I used uh, a different heel because I just always really like using my um, the basic gusset heel by Wendy D. Johnson from her toe-up sock book. I really like that. 
And uh, so I just always add it in. And uh, I made these two, which are on the sock blockers by Patricia of Notography. So really, really happy. Obviously not gonna be wearing these right now with the weather that we're having, but they'll be there waiting for the fall. And uh, I'm really gonna be interested to see how they wear. I'll have to, at a later date, do uh, a little bit of a, a review of uh, socks made out of different fibers and how they've turned out, because now I made the ones with some alpaca. Um, I made, of course, cashmere. I think lots of people have experience with that. Um, and the yak, and then my next pair, because I made another pair of socks. And what I did, which was actually quite fun, is that I made the first socks of the Nemesis, and then I cast this other pair on, I made a, a, one of these socks, and then I went back and finished the second sock from the Nemesis socks, and then came back to these ones. And so I ended up with two pairs of socks rather quickly. Uh, we were watching the Great Canadian Baking Show on Netflix, and uh, so I was just knitting socks and watching people bake. It was really fun. So I made the uh, Mercury socks, which are by Kim McKenzie. Sorry, I'd forgotten uh, the name of the designer. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. It's my second time making this pattern. It's just a really lovely, very easy lace pattern. I remembered that I had this yarn in my stash. Now this is like a supreme it's about time Cal cast on because this yarn has been in my stash since 2009. So it's been in my stash for 11 years. So it really was about time that I used it. Um, when I first got it, I had wanted to use it in a shawl or something else. Um, but I thought, why don't I make a pair of socks with it and we'll see. This is from Knitting Notions, which is a uh, company, a dyer uh, who owns a company out of the southern states. I can't remember if it was Tennessee or Texas, um, but in the southern states. And this is her Merino Bamboo Blend. Now, I can't remember the proportions, but it was almost 50-50. Like, I think it might be something like... 56% merino and the rest bamboo or 60 merino and 40 bamboo something like that um, So I'm curious to see how these wear people have made socks out of it. It was this was her green apple colorway I did go back on the website because I really enjoyed working with this um, to see her what kind of color she has now and um, and I'm gonna see how these wear, and if they were really well, then I wouldn't mind making a second pair, because I did end up wearing this pair of socks earlier this week, when it was, still was a little cooler, or last week when it was a little cooler, and I'd finished these, and they were just really pleasant to wear. Now, in the spring, when it's not that cold, I don't think these will be a great pair in the winter, um, when I really need heat, but they will be really nice in the, in the you know, spring and early fall. So here's the second pair. It's just not on a blocker because I can't, can't find my other Bryson blocker. So I have to find that. It's got to be somewhere. But uh, yeah, I just really, 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 really love these. And I made them short so that they're a little bit of an ankle sock. So there's actually quite a bit left over. I could almost make a second pair of socks um, out, of, out of this yarn. So we'll see what ends up happening or maybe it'll end up being put into something else. So that is what I accomplished over the last month. I thought I might finish my slip and slide shawl, but that hasn't happened. Um, I ended up pausing, putting it on pause for a little while as well, because I had finished, and I'm gonna show it to you, we're moving into works in progress now, by the way. <laughs> um, I had finished the, the striping section of the shawl, um, but I knew that I was gonna need some mental space. Uh, for the next section, which is the really sort of more fancy part of the shawl. So I showed this to you last time. Um, I was using um, the Malabrigo sock in the eggplant colorway, as well as a uh, Wollmice lace in this Mauser Schwanzin colorway. Uh, this is the skein that just keeps on giving. Um, I think I might be giving this to a friend once I finish because when she saw the color she fell in love with it. So um, I'm going to show you where I got 
Last time I had really just started the striping section when I showed you and I have I am on the end I'm on the I'm actually on the bind off part of the shawl but the bind off is of about 1200 stitches <laughs> and it's a pico bind off so it's taking a while and I thought I'm not going to try and rush this I'm just going to do it here and there but <clears throat> the shawl most of it is still on stitches but last time I think I was you know, I think I was around here the last time when I showed it to you. And it is going to be, and there are the, <clears throat> the sort of frilly portion of the shawl. And uh, it's going to be just very sort of, you know, kind of a frilly piece, right? Sort of, uh, and I made the small size because I didn't want this to be a wraparound shawl. I wanted it to be a little bit more of a, of a fancifying kind of shawl, if I can say that, you know, to sort of dress something up. So it's really beautiful. I can't wait to see what it's like when it's blocked out because right now it's a little difficult to see the details, but I used mohair in this portion here, which was a drops uh, kid silk mohair uh, that I had left over from another project. And um, I thought that'll be fine. And so I'm really, really looking forward to having this. I think it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful piece. And as you can see, it's all pico edging all along there, which I think really adds to the, the frilly look of the shawl. But it's slow. It's definitely slow. So I'm knitting this on four millimeter needles. I'm actually using some chow goos that I have. And I do think that chow goos are my favorite needles. But I will knit with just about anything. But yeah, so there we go. So this is the Knit and Slide by Stephen West and um, a, a beautiful pattern. And as I said last time with all of Stephen West's patterns, they're often quite uh, wild and crazy when you first see them but they're, they're so open to interpretation that you can do things that are a little bit more subtle. And, and I wanted something a little bit more subtle for this. And because I wear a lot of, of purples and grays, I thought this would be a really nice, I just wanted something that I could easily put on uh, with anything. In his version, he has the mohair along the edge. I decided to put the mohair on the inside. Um, and I, I think I used maybe, like that mohair comes in little 25 gram balls uh, with about 250 yards in them. And I think I used one of those at the very most for, for that section. Um, so this is a good stash busting kind of shawl as well. And uh, I'm still thinking about making another. This might be the Stephen West season for me. Um, I'm thinking about uh, moving on to um, another one of his shawls after. So we'll have to see. But this is being housed still in the uh, this bag by Jenna Rose, who is a local printmaker and bag maker. So. So that's one work in progress. And then, as I told you, the rug has been put aside for now, uh, and which is okay because um, the reason I was working on it was that I had been home, uh, well, I was supposed to go to a retreat at the end of April in the Adirondacks, um, but that got postponed because of the COVID-19 situation. And so I started that sweater because I wanted to be able to wear it there because I bought that yarn, the, um, from the Batten Kill Fibers last year. Um, so obviously when the, when the retreat got canceled, there was a little bit less motivation to make it. And then, as I said, my headspace just wasn't there at the moment. So um, it's been put aside. And my headspace has taken me to this sweater, <laughs> this next sweater. Um, so after I finished those socks, I thought, I think I'm ready for a sweater again. So I have cast on the Rift sweater, which is by Jacqueline Seaslack. And it is a really lovely, simple, bottom-up construction of a um, kind of cropped 
slightly oversized tee it, using a sport DK weight yarn at a rather loose gauge um, and um, you, so you could easily use uh, worsted, DK worsted kind of yarn as well. And it's just a really nice pattern that I thought would be nice as a summer piece, but could also be nice as a layering piece. So um, I bought this yarn last year at the Twist Fiber Festival from, from Farm to Cable, Farm to Cable, which is a, an online store uh, owned by Dale. And she was vending at the Twist Fiber Festival last year. She does have a lovely online store, so please go and check her out. Um, she was selling this yarn by uh, Retrosaria Pomar, made in Portugal, which is a called Mungo. And this is a yarn that is a 50 wool, 50 cotton blend of recycled fibers. It's a very interesting yarn. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I love this yarn. Uh, I'm very curious to see how the garment wears though, uh, because I think I think it's gonna the texture's gonna change with time. On at the from the get-go, it feels a tiny bit ropey, which is probably a little bit of the cotton that's doing that. And um, and perhaps the recycled nature. So I think if you've worked with any other recycled yarns, like Barocco has one, oh, the name is not coming to me right now, but I remember, I haven't actually worked with it, but I've, I've worked uh, with another recycled yarn as well. And when I've touched that Barocco yarn, there's a, there's a quality from the recycling that is given to it that um, doesn't have that sort of initial lush, rich feeling. There's a bit of a ropey feeling to it, but it can make really great garments. Like the other sweater that I've made out of recycled yarn is has been a great garment um, because I think there's a strength that comes with that recycling as well. I don't know, I'm just, that's my feeling. I don't know if that's actually true. So I started the Rift. It is a split hem sweater with a longer bit in the back and a shorter bit and then it's got this detail that goes up the side of the sweater. Um, and I'm knitting it on four and a half millimeter needles and uh, I just started it this week so I haven't gotten very far but uh, it's going swimmingly. It's going very well right now. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm in the, the body part so it's really just stocking it for several inches. Um, except for the little details on the side and um, which is great they just you, you get there and you just do those little bits of of uh, through the back loop type of knitting and uh, yeah I'm really looking forward to this I haven't actually tried it on yet so I think that um, this in a, the next couple of days I'll want to put it on a on two needles so that it's it's I can stretch it out and try it on to make sure that it fits um, I think it will. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be fine. So that is what I'm making. I'm really looking forward to seeing what it's like to wear. It's just got such a different texture. I can't even quite explain it. As I said, it's got a slight ropey feeling to it. It's got a, a rustic feeling to it. Um, so I'm kind of curious to see what it's like. I think it's going to be lovely to wear and I think it's going to be a really nice in-between season kind of top that I could wear as it is as and it'll be like a short sleeve top or I could wear it with uh, a shirt underneath it for example and treat it more like a vest. And it is being housed in this bag by Harrington Bags. I think I've shown this to you before. This is from her what did I just do? I think I just did something funny. No, I didn't. This is from her uh, Outlander collection and she makes these wonderful sort of square, very square bags. And I just love this plaid. And so I just grabbed it and put the sweater in there. And that's it for works in progress. I'm hoping that I will finish that um, knit and slide shawl this week. Um, I think I'll work on, on the Pico edging a little bit. I did it for a couple of nights and then I thought, I think it's time for a cast on. <laughs> so, I will try and finish that this week and then um, continue to work on the Rift, which has just been a really delightful knit so far. 
Okay, so before we move into the acquisition section, I thought I would um, tell you the winner of the uh, prize. So once again, we've got this wonderful wildflower colorway from Like and Lace in her sock base, which is an 80-20, 80, 80 superwash, 20 uh, nylon. And it's this beautiful spring, uh, summer kind of colors. You can almost imagine a field of flowers with a hazy lazy sky and so the prompt as I said earlier in the podcast was to tell about your silver lining and I have to say that you know this has been and I think we can all say that this has been a very bizarre time uh, full of all kinds of emotions I have to say I have not talked to anybody who hasn't had some really emotional moments during this time, um, whether it comes from the weight of the idea of the pandemic, having people not being well around them, or um, just feeling confined, um, not having choices, uh, you know, being stuck in your house. I have to say, I've been having funny dreams of buying houses, I think because I'm inside my four walls all the time, <laughs> that it's gotten a little bit uh, tiresome. So I found myself dreaming about buying houses and going to see houses. Um, it's been it's been a strange time. Uh, but I really was amazed by uh, the comments because like any time, I think, any time something really bad happens, there's always some funny little blessings or beautiful blessings, little silver linings along the way, right? That people are kind in some way or something that you thought was going to happen and that was going to be really negative didn't happen or, you know, so I think that uh, people have found ways to um, find some silver linings or some joy or some blessings during this time. So the comments were just so heartwarming. Um, lots of people uh, connecting more with family or, you know, and chatting more with people. Lots of people have uh, discovered Zoom <laughs> and um, some people continuing to work, but just um, finding joy in, in, in silver lining and getting to work more easily, for example, or uh, seeing more nature, spending more time crafting. A lot of creativity has come out during this time for some people. I have to say I haven't felt that myself so much because I am still working every day and so my routine is a little bit lighter. I don't have to run anywhere. Obviously the activities for the kids have um, either turned into video activities so they're meeting their, like Isla has um, piano classes on, on, on FaceTime with a piano teacher, um, but certain activities have completely halted. We're not driving around the city like crazy people for soccer at this point. Uh, so there is a, a different pace, which I have to say I've grown to really enjoy at this point um, and really appreciate. And I kind of think, you know what, this is not going to be like this all the time, so let's just enjoy it. Um, but yeah, it was just really lovely to hear all the comments. So. There were 511 entries um, and <laughs> I uh, did the random number generator and it got me number 332 and the way YouTube works is you just, I mean, I don't know if anybody knows of a different way, let me know, but I had to like count down. What I ended up doing was, um, you know, counting like just each one. I had to start a couple of times because I got screwed up. But the winner of this skein is uh, Nara Crochet. So Nara Crochet, I hope you're watching because I don't think that that's your actual name. So I wouldn't know how to contact you. So congratulations and let me know where you are. You know, contact me on Ravelry, on Instagram um, or here in YouTube but uh, you probably want to give your address in a private message, but uh, get in touch with me and uh, I will be happy to send you this skein of yarn. Congratulations. And thank you again to everybody who participated and for your lovely comments. Many of you actually said that this was your first time watching, that you found uh, podcasts or this podcast during this time. So, um, you know, I think a lot of people have been watching uh, more things on screens, whether it be Netflix or YouTube. So, uh, so welcome. And uh, I'm glad you found the podcast. 
Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, one more thing about this is that Nara, if uh, Nara Crochet, if um, depending on where you are, it may take a while for you to get this package, but um, if not, it'll be out as soon as you tell me uh, your address. I'll get it out this week. I think that um, next time I podcast, if we're still in this situation, and I suspect we will be, but uh, I will do another giveaway. So next podcast, I will organize another giveaway uh, with another prompt. One thing that impresses me is where people watch from. I mean, people have commented from all over the world. Some people saying that they were in Greece or in France or in, in the States, Canada and Finland and wherever, all over the place. So um, I think my next prompt will have something to do with where you are living. So anyway, all right, on to acquisitions. So I mentioned to you at the beginning of the podcast, because of the tea that I'm drinking, that I had received an incredible package. Now, Johanna and I had been talking because uh, she was, uh, or we had been chatting on, on Instagram, because she was knitting a sweater by Sari Nordlund. And I don't actually remember if it was... Um, beta knitting or if it was a sample knitting or if it was test knitting but this pattern was going to be coming out by Sari Nordland. Sari Nordland, you may know her, um, she's designed some beautiful sweaters, she's responsible for the poet sweater that was in the Line magazine at one point. I believe she's got um, a sock pattern in the most recent uh, 52 weeks of socks that Line put out. She's a Finnish designer and when I saw, saw this sweater I just absolutely fell in love with it. And Sari Nordland works for Novita, and Novita is a Finnish uh, yarn company, and they also put out patterns. And they have these magazines that are paid for magazines that come out that you can really only buy in Finland. And I believe the pattern is on, in, on uh, Ravelry in English, but when uh, Johanna and I were chatting, I said, oh, it certainly would be neat to, to uh, have the pattern in Finnish and try and knit it from Finnish, because I do speak uh, I speak some Finnish. I'm not fluent in Finnish. Um, but I thought it could be neat to try and read the pattern. And um, I certainly have, you know, people who I could ask if I don't understand something. And so she said, well, why don't I send you the magazine? And I was like, great. But I didn't get just the magazine. Because knitters are crazy. Uh, she sent me another Novita magazine, so I've been really enjoying looking at both of these, as well as a, another publication that is put out called Taito, which uh, Taito means art or craft. Not exactly sure about the nuance in that world, word, so there is all kinds of different stuff in here, so I've really been enjoying looking at those. In the package was also some wonderful chocolate, uh, a chocolate mint, which I love. And actually, it's by a company called Panda. They also make licorice. You may have seen Panda licorice here and there because it is an internationally sold uh, item. But they had this chocolate, which was this chocolate mint. And it made me think of another chocolate mint from Finland by another company called Fatser that I really enjoy. So I've been sort of sneaking those chocolates here and there. And I, I let the kids have one <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Knitting related in there, and there was lots of tea. But the other knitting related uh, items were two skeins of yarn. One is by Novita, and uh, this is a sock base. I believe it was a 7525, so it's a 75 wool and 25 polyamid superwash. It's washable, and in this sort of red, gray, and black and white. So I actually think I'm going to save these for Christmas, and these are going to become my socks that I will knit for next year. In December that's what I've decided the other skein that came in which is absolutely beautiful is by uh, Therne Wolle so this is a German yarn uh, that's a hundred percent wool in this absolutely beautiful gray Johanna I think you know me I think you know that gray is just one of those colors and this is exactly Actually, when I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is just so perfect. 
I love a stormy sky. In fact, I just see storm clouds coming and they just bring me joy. <laughs> I also love snowstorms. Anyway, I do love a sunny day as well, but um, stormy skies just, I just, that color is just one of the most beautiful things for me. And this is exactly that. This looks like a stormy sky. So I don't know what I'm going to use this in. I have been thinking about a design that uh, came out by Espace Tricot. In fact, I think it was Lisa who designed it called Subtle Interruptions. It's a one color, very simple wrap, but it's got these lines going through it every once in a while, subtle interruption of another color. Lisa's original version I'll put a picture in here so you can see it, is a dark gray with a slightly lighter gray uh, subtle interruption stripe. Um, and I thought that this could be a beautiful subtle interruption stripe if I decide to go with that scheme. Um, but it is, I really love that shawl and I think it, it really could be a beautiful piece that is just wearable with absolutely anything. Um, so that was the first thing that came to mind for this, but let's see what happens with it. It's just so beautiful. So thank you so much for that, Johanna. Um, the other couple of things that came into my life, I just realized I forgot something upstairs. So I'm just gonna pause here and I'll be back. All right, so because I realized I had forgotten these stunning stitch markers that I bought and I really think that they need to be shown off because they're so darn beautiful so and cute they're so darn cute so these are stitch markers from whimsy sassy who has a shop on Instagram I mean sorry on Etsy and I believe she is Canadian I can't remember exactly where though but she has these sort of um clay stitch markers that she makes and then glazes them so these ones are cats and then she has these wonderful gnomes with a little mushroom I mean how they're so adorable and then I also got these ones which have an alpaca a cactus and a heart I don't know if you can see the alpaca there and a whole bunch of strawberries. So they're all with the little lobster claws there. And so they're great progress keepers. So um, I will not be keeping all of these for myself. I think they'll be going into some different packages, but they were just so beautiful. It was really hard, really hard to resist buying even more because her, her work is absolutely adorable and, and lovely and they're really nicely made. So. Um, go and check her shop out if you're in the mood for some some um, progress keepers. Stitch markers, progress keepers. The other thing that I got recently is the most recent making magazine, which is number nine and it's called Simple. And there are some absolutely beautiful makes. Um, I have to say though that I was instantly sold by this sweater, which is designed by Katrin Schneider, who is always makes really beautiful, simple styles. And this sweater, which is kind of a Henley type of type of top, um, is also here they have it on a male with buttons enclosed. Um, so not that I was thinking about Alejandro, I have to say, for this particular sweater, but I just loved the versatility of it. And I just, when I had seen this, I think on Ravelry at some point, I thought, oh my gosh, I need to make that. So I am thinking about uh, what I would use for it. I'm trying really hard not to buy new uh, sweater yarn right now because I just, I have so much and I really do want to knit through some of it before. Um, but this particular, before I, I buy more, but this particular issue just has some really beautiful sweaters. Like there's a lovely boat neck sweater. This is by uh, Orlan Suk. 
um, who actually is responsible for the design of the Albini cardigan, which I'm hoping to make uh, sometime soon. There's also this beautiful sweater here with these sort of puff sleeves um, that is designed by Pam Allen. Um, they're really, really stunning designs in here. There's this wonderful cardigan made, I think it's out of Lindy, uh, linen out from Brandy Cheyenne Harper. I think maybe, is that the, who's modeling it as well? Um, it's just got these very neat details. So there are some very interesting, very interesting patterns in here. Oh, not to mention this cardigan, uh, which, let me see if I can, sorry, here it is, which is actually being, this is um, uh, Jacqueline Seaslack who designed the Rift. So there's this cardigan, which you can't really get a sense of, but it's got a texture on it. And it is designed by her, and she's modeling it. And I just, I really like it as well. Just a really simple cardigan. Um, and I realized last year I tried to make some cardigans, and I did make a couple of cardigans, and the cardigans that I made were successful, but I feel like I need more. Um, now, when I've been at home every day, I feel like my wardrobe is very much about t-shirts and, and something on top that I'll take off if I get warm or put back on. And um, I'm like, I don't have that many cardigans. Uh, you know, it's not something that I have a lot of in my wardrobe. So I hope that I'll make another one uh, or two over the next year. But there is, a ver there is a picture of it closed. I don't know if you can see that very well. And there's a picture of the detail. It's just got a bit of a, can you see the texture in the pattern? Anyway, uh, really, really beautiful knits this time. There's some hats, there's some shawls. Um, there is some sewing of, of a dress, and well, actually a whole gamut of, of items with the same pattern. And um, just some really, really lovely sewing and some natural dyeing and um, hand-painted beeswax wraps. So just really, really beautiful addition, I have to say. And along with that, I ordered this Stitch Dictionary, which I've taken out of the library, uh, I would say two or three times. And um, I decided that I, it was time for me to forget about constantly taking it out of the library, but actually have it in my collection. So this is the Knitting All Around uh, Stitch Dictionary, and it's by Wendy Bernard. And there is really a, a great selection of different types of stitches. There's 150. And so there's knits and pearls and ribs and fancy uh, twisted slip stitches types of things, cables, lace, mosaics. So I'm very intrigued by the mosaics in particular, but uh, as well as some of the other, other ones. And I just think like stitch dictionaries are just such a great thing to have to peruse and get ideas. Look at that. That is um, mosaic knitting. Isn't that? It's so pretty. So anyway, this is just a great reference book that I wanted to have and I knew that I liked it because I had taken it out of the library um, on several occasions and looked through it. So it's now in my collection. And so that's really it for the knitting portion. I thought I'd just briefly share a little bit about um, some of the other things that have been going on. Um, I mentioned earlier a little bit about the ups and downs of, of this time, of um, just adapting to uh, a new time. Um, one thing that is just wonderful, I have to say, if you can say that, can you say that anything's really wonderful in this? But uh, are the silver linings and I feel the sort of sense that we really are all experiencing this together. People have very different reactions um, to this and I think, you know, I've come to realize, okay, we all are experiencing different things at different times, but uh, there's a togetherness that I, I have, I, I really appreciate. 
Um, but for us as a family, I have to say it's been a time where we have spent more time playing cards. I've learned a couple of new card games. We've played board games. We've had dance nights. We've gone on some walks together. We've done a lot of cooking and baking together. The baking, uh, the COVID baking as I'm calling it, has continued and we've made all kinds of things. Um, and that's been really fun. Although I've realized I got to do a little extra walking because I'm eating a lot of bacon. Um, and actually this week I decided to try running. I can't believe it. I have a very bad right knee. I had surgery on it years ago from an accident. I tore ligaments in my knee. Um, it was a strange situation when I was living in Madrid in Spain in the early 90s and I ended up being in an elevator that didn't break. It's not that the cables broke and we free fell but the the, the brakes didn't work on the elevator and so we hit the bottom floor rather harshly and just the way I was standing my my knee went in the wrong direction and I ended up tearing ligaments and so there was a anybody who's had an injury to the knee it was a it was a recuperation with lots of physiotherapy but eventually I did gain uh, the range of motion that I have in my other knee and uh, sometimes I've gone through periods where I've had quite a bit of pain in my knee, but um, overall it's been good. However, I did go see a specialist a few years ago because I was having a lot of pain at that time and he said, look, your knee looks pretty good, but don't do anything that's high impact. So I've really avoided anything high impact. That's why I do yoga, I walk, I swim, but I don't downhill ski, for example. Uh, skating is too difficult. I don't traditionally run or do bouncy type sports or I'd love to play soccer for example but mm -mm, no way however I've been inspired by a friend who is doing the couch to 5k which is a podcast that takes you from basically absolutely no running to five kilometers of running and I thought and it's very sort of by intervals where you start with 30 seconds or, four, or 60 seconds of running and walking and then running and walking, running, walking. And I thought, well, why don't I try it? Um, the worst thing that happens is that after the first time, my knee hurts and that's the end of the story. Um, or I get to three minutes of running uh, with two minutes of walking in between and that's as far as I can go. And that's fine too. So I decided to try it and <laughs> I've run once. Today, because that was on Thursday, I think today will be my second day, but I was really quite impressed because I only did, I did eight segments of one minute of running and my knee was perfectly happy, not at all upset. So I thought, all right, let's do a second time. So we'll see where that goes. Perhaps I'll end up uh, doing a little bit of running here and there. I don't think I'll become a serious runner. I don't think that my knee would like that, but it might actually be okay with some running here and there and um, that is the one nice thing I'm finding myself having more time to explore things whereas normally my life would be so busy that there just isn't a whole lot of time to explore so I may not be exploring a whole lot of different crafts but I think I'm exploring baking and now I'm exploring you know like the idea of running and so that's kind of fun so that's been really cool and out on my walks um, I've been listening to books I finished The Great Gatsby which was, you know, it really was a really interesting listen. I'm glad I, I listened to it. Um, it's, it's a fascinating book and I actually, it was made even more interesting by listening to some reviews of it and listening to some, um, well, I guess scholars talking about it a little more. Uh, and I realized it really is a very rich book, not only in its depiction of the 20s, um, and the lifestyle and uh, the characters but also I think a lot of the symbolism and a lot of I think it was really foretelling in a way of where things were going to go with society in the 1920s and, and beyond that and I think that's one of the reasons it became a classic anyway I really enjoyed it it was read by Jake Gillen I think it's Gillenhall or Gyllenhaal um, and he did a great job reading it I then listened to A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hosseini, who is the writer of The Kite Runner, which I read years ago, and it was a, an incredibly uh, incredible story, a harrowing story, um, compelling, you couldn't stop, but very intense. 
and this one was along those lines as well takes place in Afghanistan spans from I think the early 70s until the 2000s so a whole series of things that happen in Afghanistan and uh, it's really the story of two women and that's the one thing I really like about his stories they're difficult I'm not gonna be honest I mean I'm not gonna lie um, they're not easy to listen to um, but they are really about the women and children and the, and the impact on them. And I really appreciate that. Um, and it, it was a really beautiful book. Uh, difficult, again, difficult to, to listen to and made me quite angry uh, at certain times. Um, but, uh, but I really enjoyed it and appreciated it. And then after that, I read then she was gone by lisa jewell which is in the thriller category but i wouldn't call it a thriller i don't know what a subcategory of that i would call it more of a psychodrama i really enjoyed it i wasn't sure i was going to um part way through the book i thought this sounds like a bit of a romance novel almost and where is this going and it was a little bit predictable but i don't think that that really took away from it because it really exp it was it was just a well-told story that kind of um and, and wrapped up nicely in the end. And I really enjoyed it. And there was something that struck me at the end of that book and thinking a little bit about A Thousand Splendid Sons because they were both about compositions of families that end up being not conventional. And I thought, you know, you know, this concept of family can be a very fluid concept. We can think about it as the nuclear family and the extended family and people who are blood uh, related. But in my life as immigrants um, living in a country with no other family besides my mother and father, uh, our family has really been friends uh, very, very much. And people who have come into our lives for different reasons and have become part of our fabric and I think both of these books sort of delved into that in a certain in a certain way and I I really enjoyed that it made me think a little bit more about what what is family and what is the composition of family and the and I just it, it touched me because I think for me that has been something that has been part of my life is a family being um, people who just you connect with in and not just because they're your best friend but they become part of your family in some way they become part of the celebrations and they are family so anyway I really those two books when after reading the two of them I thought they both have this theme of people being put together um, for unusual circum reasons sometimes but just how and they becoming part of your own circle and your own fabric anyway and right now I am reading uh, My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante, which is an Italian author. It's a translated book. Um, I can't tell you a whole lot about it yet, but it was just funny because it was a viewer who had mentioned it and then somebody else mentioned it too. And I thought, okay, two people have mentioned it. I'm going to start listening to that. So I'm listening to it right now. It is a translation from Italian and there are moments where I'm not super thrilled with the writing, but um, I think that's partly the translation. But um, so far, I'm, I'm enjoying it. So I'll tell you more about it later. And aside from that, as I said, we've been watching, we've been watching a lot of baking and doing a lot of baking. <laughs> so we watched The Great Canadian Baking Show, and now we're watching the Family, Cook Down Sh Family Cooking Showdown, which is a British um, cooking show about families cooking together, and we've been enjoying that. And what I really like about that is that there's a lot of savory food, and it's not just sweets. So it's been inspiring. We've been thinking, oh, we should try making a, you know, sh this thing or that thing or whatever. And it's been really fun. I haven't watched uh, a whole lot more than that. I have to say life has been busy. There's a lot of family time because uh, we don't have all the activities going on. So we tend to do a lot of things together and um, or going. I'm trying to spend as much time getting some movement in. So there's usually a walk in the evenings as well. And um, so not a whole lot of screen time. So I think that brings us to the end of the episode. I was checking my notes and I thought, okay, I think I've said everything that I, I wanted to share today. 
So I hope that uh, you have been able to enjoy uh, this time that we've had together, whether you've been crafting or sitting down and relaxing, drinking a little something, uh, whatever. And uh, I hope that you will continue to find some silver linings um, during this next little while until I podcast next and check in with you. Please feel free to comment below and say hello um, and share anything that you've been working on that you've been enjoying a lot. That would be lovely to hear. I'm going to be uh, ending the podcast with some, probably some more spring images because there's just, spring is just exploding and there's color everywhere but also some of the patterns that have come into my life. I realized that I did not share them in the acquisition section, so I'll leave them at the end because there have been some patterns that I have purchased, uh, a couple that have been also given to me, and thank you. And so I will just leave those at the end along with some more images of spring. So take care and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. To see you, I suppose, and they're a gleaming. You must be dreaming. And the sun has said goodbye with a twinkle in his eye. He's left the ocean with sweet emotion. We go. Dancing in the rain, riding on a midnight train, away so slowly. And the moon is looking down on the sleepy side of town, and he's so lonely. Sleepy side of town, and he's so lonely.